Hello guys, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Today let's talk about my favorite thing, it's almost a weekend. Let's talk about Boost. More specifically, how much timing should you run under Boost? In this video, we're going to take a look at the effect of timing on three different boosted LS applications. We're going to take a look at a Vortex supercharged motor. We're going to take a look at a Whipple supercharged motor. And of course, we're going to take a look at a turbocharged LS motor. How much time do you need? How much power do you gain? And is there any downside? One of the questions I often get whenever I do these videos is people always ask, well, what about the tune? What, what happens? How do you know how to tune it? And what happens when you do tune it? What happens with the air feel? And more importantly for most people, what happens with the timing? Because I have videos up already on comparing what happens when we run these things at different air feel ratios. And the reality is there's not usually a lot of power there. I mean, we ran stuff uh, when I did things for engine masters at nine to one and then ran it, it was an NA motor. And then we ran it at, you know, closer to 12 and a half or 13 to one. And the power difference wasn't that dramatic, but when we changed the timing, we could change the power output by a hundred horsepower or more. It was quite a bit. So I want to show you what happens, what the effect of timing is particularly on force induction applications. So we're going to start out, we've got a 4.8 liter. This one was a LR4. It had the forged pistons that we always run on this combination because I've run this motor a, a, about a bajillion times. So it had the, the forged small dome JE pistons in it. We'll take a look at the rest of the combination here. It had an LJMS uh, blower cam in it. It was actually a positive displacement blower cam. It was a 610 586 lift. 223, 238 degree duration split and or duration and 120 degree lobe separation angle. This one had trick flow 205 heads on it and we'd interchange those with the stock 706 heads a bunch. It had stock rockers, it had a stock truck intake manifold, it had inch and seven eighths headers and we ran this with the Holly HP management system. This thing had 83 pound Holly injectors in it because we were gonna run it under boost. So when we ran this thing naturally aspirated with that blower cam in it, it produced almost 400 horsepower, 398 horsepower and 353 foot pounds of torque. So here's what happened when we added our blower. And this is as we started to, we had a Vortec V3. Uh, this was non intercooled at the time, I believe. I wanna check and verify that. Vortec V3 had an ATI damper on it that we used for the lower pulley. It had a seven and a half inch blower pulley and uh, non, it was non-intercooled at the time. So what I wanted to show you is well, what happens when we're tuning these things is we always start out with low timing and then we optimize the air fuel and then we add timing. And here's what happened. This was at 18 degrees of total timing out here at the horsepower peak. It had slightly less down here. We, we usually have a curve in it. So if it has 18 degrees total at the top, it might only have 13 or 14 down at the bottom. But I want to show you what happens. This thing will run much better at over 20 degrees. So I want to show you what happened when we went from 18 to 20 degrees during our timing sweeps. So this is how much the power changed from 23 degrees. Now we did rev it higher um, because we're, we're just starting to find out where this thing wants to continue to make peak power and it wants to keep revving. It's a centrifugal vortex supercharger. So the higher that we rev it, the more airflow and the more boost it provides. So it basically wants to keep making power. But you can see even in the same RPM range, going from 18 to 23 degrees, we went from 654 or from 554 to 607 horsepower. So it's a big change when you have the right amount of timing in it. And even for our non-intercooled version, I want to make sure I think that this thing was run on E85. Test description. Yes, it was run on E85. So adding the timing, and this is a fairly low boost. I'll go ahead and put the boost numbers up here. Centrifugal supercharger, I can't just, I can give you a peak boost number, but I'll give you a range because the boost will start very, very low with the centrifugal, then end up fairly high at the top of the RPM range. But this just goes to show you what happens when you go from not very much timing to the right amount of timing on a supercharged LS. The next illustration of the effect of timing was actually run on a Whipple supercharged 4.8 liter. The 4.8 liter, at least the short block, was the same as the one that we had run before. It had the small dome uh, forged JE pistons in it. And in fact, it had the same camshaft in it. It had the LJMS 
blower cam in it and I can go ahead and put the specs up here again for you guys. You guys can take a look at that. But the big difference is that it had the stock 706 heads on it and not the trick flow heads on it. We still had the 83 pound injectors and we installed the Whipple 2.9 liter supercharger with a seven and a half inch uh, crank pulley and a four inch blower pulley. And what we did is it was the same thing that we did with the Vortec on it. We would start with low timing and then dial in the air fuel. This was also run on E85. And then we would start adding timing to it after that. So this was our 4.8 liter combination with the Whipple run at 15 degrees of timing, 462 horsepower and 452 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened as we went in, up in successive steps with more timing. So here's what happened when we added, when we went from 15 degrees to 19 degrees of time. And you can see this thing wanted more timing. <laughs> it made a big jump in power with the four degrees of timing. So at 15 degrees, we were at 462. And at 19 degrees, we were at 523 horsepower. So we picked up a ton from the timing and we weren't done there. We went, then we then went from 19. To 21 degrees and still picked up more we could see and this is what we do when we're running timing changes if the thing continues to respond to timing we continue to go up in timing if it will respond obviously we get to a point now this thing also had a, an air to water intercooler on it and we were running 85 so it was plenty safe but we continue to add the timing as long as it's responding up to our predetermined level because you sometimes you can keep adding timing and it will keep making power right up to the point till you let all the magic smoke out of it so this is what happened when we went to 21 degrees our peak power was up to nearly 550 or just over 550 horsepower here's what happened when we went up our final timing step we went up to 23 degrees and it's still, this thing is still picking up power. It was amazing how much timing this thing wanted. We were up to 577 horsepower. It was at this point that I stopped. I didn't think that I wanted to go any higher than 23 degrees of timing on this particular combination. But you can see, we we went, uh, we went improved the power by more than 100 horsepower just by going from 15 degrees of timing up to 23 degrees of timing on this supercharge 4.8. To round out all of our forms of forced induction, we'd run it on a centrifugal blower and then a positive displacement Whipple. So now it was time for a turbo. So we have another 4.8 liter. I'll take a look at our description here. It is a stock LR4. It, again, it was the same short block that we had run before. Stock block, stock crank, stock rods. It had Gen 4 stuff in it and then it had our... Um, Forge JE small dome pistons. This one had a Crane 224 cam, which was 590 lift. It was 224, 232 at 50, 115 degree lobe separation angle. And we in, and had, had the TrickFlow 205 heads. It had a truck intake manifold and AccuFab throttle body. And we had a single turbo kit that consisted of uh, a, a CX Racing air and water intercooler. We had a small 76 millimeter CX Racing turbo. We had the two turbo smart wastegates. And again, all this was controlled by the uh, Holly HP management system so that we could dial this thing in. We had it, <laughs> interestingly enough, it says 36 pound injectors here. That's what we had on the NA version. We had some much bigger injectors on the turbo version. So here was our turbocharged 4.8 liter. And again, like we had with the other two, we start off with low timing, dial in the air fuel, and then start advancing the timing to see what effect the timing has on our particular combination. Um, on our 4.8 liter, we ran the uh, 6 Racing 76 millimeter turbo, and I'll go ahead and put the boost level up here for you. But we started off with 18 degrees of timing, where our little turbo 4.8 produced 539 horsepower and 502 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened. That was at 18 degrees. Here's what happens. We'll go up in uh, two degree steps. So we went up to 20 degrees, where it made 550 horsepower. At 22 degrees, uh, picked up a, you know, there it was more in some areas, but we had a peak of 557 horsepower. So not a lot, not a big gain there on the last increase. And then 24 degrees, and we had more of a gain there. I think we probably maybe adjusted the air fuel on the top there just a little bit. 
and we saw 575 horsepower. Peak torque was now checking in at 523 foot-pounds. It's interesting that we didn't see the same kinds of gains on the Turbo 4.8 that we saw on the supercharged stuff. Going from 18 to 24 degrees, we went from 537 to 575 horsepower. Still good gains, you know, it's uh, you're looking at about 40 horsepower or so from the timing change. Uh, and But what you need to look at is, and you need to compare this on all of these, is the safety margin. The thing is, you have to think about, I know Richard said I could run this timing. <laughs> we ran it on the engine dyno and it might have been safe there. But the thing is, as we go up in timing with every combination, you get closer and closer to the danger zone. So as you go up in timing, the chance of detonation increases and the chance of you hurting the motor definitely increases. So basically, rather than just look at the power numbers on these, you need to decide, is it worth me taking a chance? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, this is the portion of the video where we talk about what we learned in the video and the reality is I think we kind of already covered it. But hey, let's do a refresher course. We saw that as we added timing on our boosted LS combinations, one was a Vortex supercharged LS, the other one was a Whipple supercharged LS, and the final one was a turbocharged supercharged LS. And as we added timing on all of those combinations, they all responded basically the same way. As we added timing, they made more and more power. Okay, so the lesson from today, add timing to your super or turbocharged LS combination. Yes, and at the same time, absolutely not. <laughs> There's obviously a limit to how much timing you can safely add because something bad is going to happen. With too little timing, you're not going to make as much power. That's bad, but it's not terrible. If you add too much timing, you're going to break something that's very important in the motor, like a piston or a rod. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.